What's up, everyone? This is Sherry here. Welcome back to my channel. So recently, there's a big news about how Bill Ackman made $2.6 billion from $27 million, which is 100 times return. I find it's very interesting and I go into the details of the news. I want to share what I found and also three things I learned from Bill Ackman. So let's get started. Bill Ackman is the founder and CEO of hedge fund management company Pershing Square Capital Management. He got his bachelor degree from Harvard Majoring Arts and later got his MBA from Harvard too. He started Pershing Square in 2004 with $54 million from his personal fund and his former business partner. So currently Pershing Square has $8 billion asset under management. The news of his big short started in March when Bill Ackman recommended on Twitter about country shutdown and he's also said on CNBC that tsunami is coming and those broadcasts has caused more attention about the virus from the general public and after a few more days he said he earned 2.6 billion from the big short and he cleared his short position and become optimistic about the situation and economy that day the stock market dropped 12% and he said he began to optimistic about the stock market. So what did Bill Ackman bought? He mainly bought CDS, which is called credit default swap to protect his other long-term equity. The CDS he bought are on the US investment grade and high yield credit indices and the European investment grade credit index. Through CDS, he linked to 71 billion corporate debt which is 10 times AUM of his company. It's like an insurance to stock market increase that he needs to pay 27 million every month for five years until the market crash and he can make money from it. So here is a video briefly talk about how CDS work. One of the ways that an individual, company, pension, or financial institution can make money is by issuing loans or credit. Sometimes this can be done by purchasing bonds. Each of these bond purchases carries some risk of default. A credit default swap, or CDS, shifts this risk onto an insurance company or other CDS seller in exchange for a certain premium. There are three parties to a credit default swap, the CDS buyer, the bond issuer, which is the company or municipality that wishes to borrow money from the bond buyers in exchange for interest, and the CDS seller, a business or insurer that guarantees the underlying debt between bond issuer and buyer. For example, a company wants to raise money to expand its business and does so by issuing bonds that pay 5% interest over 10 years. At maturity, the bond principal is to be paid back as the issuer assumes it will have enough money to do so at that date. The bond buyer has taken a risk by assuming that during the 10 years preceding maturity, they will receive 5% interest and at maturity receive their principal back. Since there is always a chance the bond issuer will default, especially if the bonds were rated low by rating companies such as Standard & Poor's, the bond purchaser may choose to allocate some of the interest toward the purchase of a credit default swap. If they do, the CDS seller will insure the principal amount and, if the bond issuer defaults, will pay it to the CDS buyer. Luckily, he bought the CDS in February and just paid $27 million once. And then the market crashed in March, and their hedges increased value from zero to a peak of $2.7 billion, which were around 40% of their total capital, as their equity investment declined significantly over the same period. In March 12th to 23rd, they completed the exit from the hedges, which generated the total amount of $2.6 billion. 100 times sounds a great trade, but actually, his cost of the hedging strategy is not $27 billion. It should be $27 million multiplied by 12 multiplied by 5 because it's a 5-year deal and he needs to make a monthly payment of $27 million. But I feel like uh, Ackman is very lucky. So on the second month, the market collapsed. So he just need to pay one month of the premium. 
the reason for Ackman to buy the CDS is not speculation, actually. According to him, he said at that time in February, he has two options. The first one is sell all his portfolio, and the second one is to hedge his portfolio. If he chose the first option, sell his portfolio, and the size is too big, it would have the impact of the market, and then they would suffer from more loss from it because they could not get a good selling price. So he tried to use 4% of their annual cost to protect his assets. Although he earned 2.6 billion in this trade, his hedge fund just had around 4% return for the year of 2020 so far. So here are three things I learned from Ackman. The first one is anti-fragile in uncertain circumstances. Uh, there's a book called Anti-Fragile. It talks about how people can like proactively to take actions to in order to account the uncertainty like the black swan effect. Bill Ackman is a value investor, but he always think about creative ways to hedge the uncertainty in the future. The so anti-fragile approach can make us become proactive rather than passive when there is the uncertainty events that we never know what's gonna happen in the future. And I strongly believe people who take actions to create their future will win. And the people who just uh, complain all day and do not do the real work and uh, they don't know how to deal with the uncertainty, they are very weak and they are gonna eventually gonna lose. The second thing I learned from Ackman is to admit your failure and learn from it. As I said at the beginning, experience is making mistakes and learning from mistakes. And uh, unfortunately, as students, you haven't made many mistakes yet. If, you know, if you've gotten to Oxford at this point in your career, the biggest risk is you probably haven't screwed up a lot. And so you know, the risk of that is when data comes across your desk that's inconsistent with your being successful, you're less likely to pay attention to it than if you've made a few mistakes. So I encourage you to make some mistakes. Um, and uh, actually, I, I've made plenty of, over the course of my career, and I think I've been very successful uh, over time, but it's not been a straight line up. In fact, I had, if, if I were a stock, it would look something like this after business school, you know, and then, <laughs> and so the concern is whether this is coming, you know, <laughs> but, but so far, you know, we've, we've, you know, the overall trend has generally been positive, but, you know, there, there are certainly bumps along. Everyone has failure. No one can always win. And of course, Ackman is not right all the time, and he has lost half his money on herbal life bets. A lot of people don't want to admit their failure because they think it will lose their face. But actually, if they don't dare to admit the failure, it's the reason that makes people lose more. Because you never know what you did wrong and how can you prevent it from happening next time. I think accept the failure and grow from it, make Ackman stronger and then come back again with confidence and more strategies. And that's also what I'm gonna do is to not worry about your mistake and failure. And actually I think it's a good thing because I know that this doesn't work so I won't repeat it next time. The third thing I learned from Ackman is do the due diligence before wiring the money. I also think fundamental analysis as well as financial analysis is important before you invest in any stock. And by doing the fundamental analysis and the financial analysis, you can distinguish between good business, fair business, and bad business. So it's like through the data, you can know that who is naked when the tide is went down. I think one reason of Ackman's success is to do his own research and analysis and do not follow the herd. He said even he's on vacation, like resting on the beach, he's still uh, reading the reports. 90% people lose money in the stock market. Only the ones who dive deep and fully understand what they're doing and why they're doing it can earn the money. So currently I'm using the smart stock screener for the fundamental data as well as the financial data. And I also use their technical indicators to see uh, what the price level it is and whether it's overbought or oversold to determine whether it's a good position to get in. 
So this app is available in both iOS and Android store and it comes handy when you come up with some trading ideas on the way or somewhere there's no access to a computer. This app is free with no ads for now, so feel free to try it and let me know your thoughts. That's all for today. Uh, please let me know what you guys use for fundamental analysis and financial analysis. I would love to learn more from you guys and uh, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.